Welcome back to Show Me The Nuggets. Eduardo Trinidad here from the team at Digital Triggers. If you have the financial means and management know-how, acquiring another business can be the quickest way to grow your agency. In today's episode, agency coach and advisor Jason Swank shares some of the key factors to consider when you're looking to acquire another agency. Here we go. If somebody wanted to grow through acquisitions, like you guys have been growing through acquisitions, you said, obviously, you're looking for a million dollar EBIT businesses, right? So they're profiting at least a million dollars a year. You kind of gave a formula of kind of what you guys are offering uh, in terms of the the valuation and how Mm -hmm. you pay them, what a deal would look like. Um, What's your vetting process look like? Or maybe what, what are the things that um, you're really concerned about getting right? Well, a couple of things is, is do they have a strong leadership team in place? Yep. Right. Uh, do they have strong systems in place in order to like, is this just a freaking nature? I want to see growth year over year and also growth in, in EBITDA, not just top line. Um, I want to see a predictability, uh, you know, in monthly recurring revenue, you know, the more, the better. I also want to see long-term contracts. I always laugh at when uh, agencies have short-term contracts. I think that's um, that just alludes to they have a, a pretty piss poor sales system yeah. because uh, you know they don't have a good way of, or it could be even go back to another layer of piss poor positioning or marketing system, right? Yeah. Um, because they haven't positioned in the right way as the as a leader, or they haven't positioned on the sales of like what's the right offering at the right time in order to build trust. Because you know it's an easy decision to say, yeah, I'll give you ten thousand dollars a month, uh, but I can cancel at any time. Yeah. It's a harder decision to say I'm going to give you fifty thousand, and you're going to at least be locked in for a year. So you have to right look at those kind of things. So I want that predictability, or you know, a lot of your deal is going to be probably on an earnout because it's going to be yeah. performance based, right? Um, and then you know, do they fit the culture? I mean, that should be go go without saying. Um, are they trying to sell for the right reasons? Like sometimes I I find people are like, we love our business, and they really hate their business partner, and they don't know a way out, or they really hate their clients. And you got to really kind of investigate, like, why are they doing it? Like if you, and and here's a a tidbit that I've kind of recently kind of just figured out. If you, if you're at a point, and I talk to a lot of agency owners now where they're like, I hate our clients. (laughs) They'd like resent their clients. Like, have you ever got to that point? And if you're at that point, the thing that you need to do, the reason why you resent them is because you lean on them too much and you're too dependent on them. Meaning you should be really focused on kind of at the base camp of really going back to base camp and building a lead generation system. So now you can pick and choose. Um, yep. Right. Cause I see so many people that way where they're, they just start getting resenting on their clients and they're like, I don't want to like, and, and they want to sell because of that. And it's an easy fix. It's like, yep. Go to the traffic store, like turn on, you know, the marketing and, and, and a lot of times we agency owners struggle with their own marketing too. So, uh, which is a whole nother story. I think you're exactly right. I think it's also something that something else that you pointed to is the, is the, is the contracts in there. A lot of times they don't have good contracts in and they become a slave, right? Because their sales and marketing isn't that good. So they're afraid they they can lose one or two clients, three clients, five clients really fast. And that's going to like literally kill their business. So yeah, completely agree there. Yeah. Um, are you looking to bring on, I guess the answer is yes. You're looking to bring on the founder long-term then, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the cool thing that we do um, is we don't even tell anybody that we bought you for like six or eight months. So they, right. And we keep the team intact. We keep the brand intact, everything. Like we don't want to mess with something that's already working. A lot of times people want to buy a struggling agency and turn it around. I'm like, that's a lot of work, same amount of work. Like it's like even more work than, you know, buying someone good. (laughs) So what do you look for in a founder? Obviously talked about good leadership, good systems, but what's, what, what are you looking for in that founder role? What's well, the same same thing as bringing on a team member, right? Because they're going to be a team member. Like, do they believe in what we believe in? Like, yeah. I always use analogy. Like, if 
if, um, you know, a lot of times agency owners struggle with this, if they don't have that clarity of where they're going, because they started by accident, kind of like, you know, my story and probably a lot of other people listening, um, and they don't really have a direction. So then everybody comes to you f- to make a decision because they don't know where the hell they're going. So picture you're in a boat from New York Harbor to London, but you don't tell your team where you're going. But if you told your team that you're going to London, maybe half would get off. Okay, well, good. Rather than getting them all there and then they leave to come back or or even look at it this way of going, anytime the boat changes course, you know, uh, come wake me up. Well, they're going to wake you up every minute. If you just told them where the damn, hey, I'm going at 180 degrees, it's going to go get you to London. Okay, like you can do a course correction and yep. I can sleep. Yeah. So, yeah, you want to keep them as the founder still long term, right? Mm-hmm. Is the answer. And they need to be exactly. a culture. Yeah, exactly. Sure. So, um, this question is the opposite kind of what, of what I just asked. Um, so I want to be careful how we answer it, but what's not the obvious thing, but what's killing most of the deals that you're looking at? The the owners think they're more worth more than they really are. Hmm. It's their baby, which I totally get it. I understand it. Um, and at the end of the day, you're in total control, but your agency is only worth what you're willing to sell it for and what someone's willing to buy it for. Yeah, for sure. And then a lot of times people too, they go, they set a time limit, which is stupid. Um, they go in seven years. I just chatted with an agency owner. I was interviewing them for the mastermind and they're like, well, in seven years, I want to sell. I'm like, why seven? Like, is that your lucky number? Like, what if the market's really bad? Oh, I, I don't know. Like, why not just sell it when you get to a certain point, which like, if we could speed you up and get you there in two years, would you sell then? Or would you wait for the market to crash and then sell it at your seven? And they're like, oh, I never thought about it that way. And so there's a lot of people that think about it that way. And, and you need to change the thinking. That's really interesting. When earlier you talked about how a lot of times you turn people away from selling, mm-hmm. right? You almost are the deal killer. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, tell, don't tell the partners that. <laughs> I was not expecting you to say that. Um, I'm curious, what, what does that mean? Can you extrapolate on that a little bit? Like, how does your conversation go from Jason, I want to sell to Jason, I actually want to keep it. I, I appreciate yeah. the conversation we had, but I want to, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that happens all the time. I, I don't know. It just, I guess, stems from my personality where I've always had the mentality of going, I'm going to sell someone something that they need rather than what I want them to, right? And I think that's a problem with a lot of agencies where they constantly try to sell what they want to sell rather than what the customer needs. So, you know, and the same thing in all the other, like when I'm interviewing someone for a mastermind or whatever it is, right? Like if I don't think they're going to be right fit, I'm like, you're not the right fit right now. Like, yeah. It just, you're just not, or like, I'll go to the, the owner and be like, you have something pretty amazing here. That's why we, we want to buy it. And so does other people. So why do you want to sell it? Like if, it, and then sometimes they're like, what would you do? I'm like, I'd probably hold on to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're, and they're like, why? I was like, well, well, you, you, you take off the summers, you work four days a week, you get a million dollars a year. Um, and, you know, I'm offering you $5 million, so, which will pay you two and a half up front. Two and a half is anything after that is not guaranteed, even though no matter, you know, some people say it is, but it's not. Yeah. Like, why? And they're like, oh, I never thought about that way. So I just, it has to be a win-win for both parties. It's, that's how I've always looked at it. Well, as I haven't always looked at it that way, honestly. Um, but as I get older and older, I look at it more and more that way. That's really good. That's really deep and insightful. I'm curious, what are what are the valid reasons that you find people are selling their agencies? Like, not the surface level stuff that you see in the marketplace, right? When you look at a business that's for sale, there's always like the surface level. I'm selling it because, and and it's just, it's not the real reason, right? It's just, they think that they can get away with saying that, or that's what's acceptable. What, yeah. 
when, when you're acquiring companies successfully, what is the real reason that the founders have wanted to work with you, Jason, and be a part of this roll up and, and bigger vision? And why, why did they say yes? What, what appealed to them? I think some people think they've gotten there by accident and they have that imposter syndrome is one. Uh, another one, they feel that they've maxed out and they think that they need to sell or um, they really want to be around other people. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, that's too why they bring on partners. They want to be yeah. around other people so they're not the only soul. And I actually discourage people around bringing on partners, especially as they're underway. And in, in starting, because you're starting from nothing, it's worth nothing. It's easy to get out. Make sure you have a good operating agreement. But but let's say you're a million dollar business and you're thinking about bringing on a partner. I'm like, dude, find a group of other agency owners to be your advisors or a mastermind for that. It's so much cheaper than buying a partner out later on. For sure. Because I always look at it like you either know the bad partner or you're the bad partner. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> No, that's really good advice. I see it all too often, right? I talk to one partner. I'm like, you got an amazing business, man. This is fantastic. And then I meet mm -hmm. the partner and I'm like, oh, wow, this is interesting. Um, yeah, I'd like to be this guy in the in the arrangement. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I like the advisory board idea as well. You know, having that feedback loop as any entrepreneur is, is really important. And I think an advisory board is a, is a better way to get it and a much cheaper way to get it. Um, than, than a full-blown partner. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, most definitely. That's awesome, brother. Thanks for tuning in and show me the nuggets. If you've been enjoying the podcast and find our content helpful, please visit our Apple Podcast page, hit the subscribe button, and leave us a review. Joe and the whole team have been working hard to bring more value to the show. Your feedback will go a long way in helping us make the show better and reach a wider audience. 